In this video, we're going to work through this rotational motion for a response question. The left end of a uniform beam of mass M and length L is attached to a wall by a hinge, as shown in figure one. One end of the string, one end of a string with a negligible mass is attached to the right end of the beam. The other end of the string, string is attached to the wall above the hinge at point one. The beam remains horizontal. The hinge exerts a force on the beam of magnitude FH, and the angle between the beam and the string is theta, just theta 1, right here, angle theta 1. The following rectangle represents the beam in figure 1. On the rectangle, draw and label the forces, not components, exerted on the beam. Draw each force as a distinct arrow starting on and pointing away from the point at which the force is exerted. So we're going to... Um, so down here, we have this beam right there, but I'm going to draw it up here so you can see this picture. So I'm just going to move that picture up here. So here's our beam, which is right here. And we're going to draw all the forces acting on this beam. So I like to always start with gravitational force because we know there's gravitational force on all object on Earth that's going to be pointed straight down, so gravitational force. I also know there's a string, so there's going to be a force along the direction of the string, and that's going to be Ft right there. And then there's also going to be a force over here. And the reason I know that is because, because this object is in rotational equilibrium. It's not moving. It's not rotating. It's not, uh, it's, it's just still. And so I know that the net torque, the net torque has to equal zero. So I can pick any point on this beam. So let's say I pick this point right here and all the torque on this side needs to balance all the torque on this side. So I know since this is has a force to the left and this is force up, I can break this into components, force to the left. I know this has to have a component to the to the right, and this is also has a force up. Now this force up might be balanced by this. Okay, so we have to investigate this a little bit more. But at least I know over here we have to have a force as a component to the right. So I can also pick a component, uh, pick here, I pick this point. And everything on the left, the torque, all the torque of over here on the left here needs to uh, add up to zero. Okay, so I know there's a force down. So I know there's also needs to be a force up. So not only have I concluded that there needs to be a force to the right, there also needs to be a force up. So if I combine those two, um, I know it's going to be at an angle. We'll call this FH, the force um, uh, exerted at the uh, hinge there, right? So just to recap. The reason I know that, that this is the force from the hinge is because the net torque um, needs to be zero uh, from any point. So if I pick this point, this is causing this bar to rotate this way, which is uh, counterclockwise. I need a force that's going to cause it to rotate clockwise. So this vertical component right here will cause it to rotate clockwise. Not only that, if I pick this point as my um, as my uh, axis of rotation right here, then I know that this has a force to the left. And not only is this not moving, uh, rotating, okay, it's also not moving left or right, up and down. I also know that the net force in all directions, in this direction is zero. Also, the net force in this direction is zero, okay? So I know that all the forces needs to, needs to balance. And so, uh, if there was a force going this way and there's nothing like balancing the force going this way, then this would start accelerating this way. So there must be another force here to counteract that. Um, so using um, understanding what how what equilibrium is where all the torques need to be balanced, all the forces need to be balanced. I know there has to be a hinge force at that location in that direction. OK, next, moving on. Now it says that the, the string is then attached lower on the wall at point 2, and the beam remains horizontal, as shown in figure 2. The angle between the beam and the string is theta is equal to theta 2. The dashed line represents the string shown in figure 1. So now you'll notice that the angle has decreased. Angle has decreased. The magnitude of the tension in the string shown in figure 1 is Ft1. The magnitude of the tension in the string in figure 2 is Ft2. Indicate which of the which of the following correctly compares FT2 and FT1. 
So we know that torque is equal to R F perpendicular, or we can write R F sine theta. Okay. So knowing that this beam is not rotating, is 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 at rest, so the torque needs to stay constant uh, because the beam is not rotating, it's not moving. So we know that this needs to remain constant. So how can this remain constant if the theta decreases? So if the theta decreases, and if we take a look at a sine graph here, uh, you'll get something like this, okay? So this is uh, uh, pi 180 degrees, this is 2 pi, and this would be pi over 2, which is, this would be 90 degrees. So between here and here, okay, it's going to be less than 90 degrees. Um, as theta increases, sine will also increase. So this is theta, okay, and then this is sine theta. So as theta increases, sine theta will also increase between 0 and 90 degrees, right? So what that means is if sine theta decreases, if theta decreases, sine theta will also decrease. So this is decreasing. So this number right here, as theta decreases, this whole amount will decrease, which means that this force, the tension force, has to increase in order for this whole quantity to remain constant. Okay? And we know it's going to remain constant because this uh, beam is not moving, it's not rotating. All right. So, um, to answer this question, um, we're going to say that Ft2 is going to be greater, Ft2 is going to be greater than Ft1, which is choice number one. Briefly justify your answer using the qualitative reasoning uh, beyond referencing equations. Okay. So the reasoning here is that in order to have the same torque, and since the theta, the angle decreases, we need to have more tension force. Okay, so since the angle decreases, decreases, the sine theta will also decrease and therefore Ft needs to increase in order to have the same torque. Okay, and just put in this equation right here, torque is equal to R F sine theta. All right, now we'll move on to part C. Starting with Newton's second law in rotational form, derive an expression for the magnitude of the tension in the string Express your answers in terms of m, theta, and physical constants as appropriate. Begin your derivation by writing a fundamental physics principle or an equation from the reference book. So the Newton's second law in rotational form looks like this. All right, so instead of net force equals ma, it's net torque is equal to the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. Uh, so uh, here is our beam. And we are, I'm going to, here's my hinge. I'm going to make counterclockwise positive. Counterclockwise positive positive. So I'm going to take all the forces that are going counterclockwise minus the forces going clockwise. And uh, so I'm going to start off with the string. So L, which is going to be our, the length of the beam. Okay, distance from the string where it's pulling on the beam to the axis rotation times Ft times the force, sine theta, okay? So that's going to be that force right there, okay? Minus, and that's going counterclockwise, minus the force causing it to rotate clockwise, which is going to be the weight of the beam. Um, and the effective kind of torque there is going to be located right in the middle of the beam. Um, every single particle in this beam is exerting a torque, uh, but if you were to um, add all of those up, it would be, as if all of the mass were concentrated right at this point, and, and the weight of all that mass at that point causing a torque 
you would get the same number. Okay, so the effective torque would be L over 2 times mg, mass of the beam, times g. That's the weight of the beam. And all of that is equal to 0. I don't have to worry about sine theta because it's sine 90 degrees. It's already, it, it's, it's perpendicular already, so I don't need to worry about the sine theta. Okay, so now um, I'm going to move this over to the right-hand side, the L over 2 to the right-hand side. And actually, I can cancel out the L. So let me go and cancel out the L first. And I get FT. And what I'm solving for is an equation for FT. FT sine theta is equal to mg divided by 2. Now I'm going to divide sine on both sides. And I get FT is equal to mg over 2 sine theta. Part D, is your derived equation in Part C consistent with your justification Justification in Part B? Explain your reasoning, right? And so if data decreases, okay, so as data decreases, sine theta also decreases, also decreases. And that's true for angles 0 and 90 degrees. Um, and so as theta decreases, sine theta decreases, right? So if these decreases and these are inversely related to FT, that means FT needs to increase. So as theta decreases, sine also decreases. Um, therefore, FT increases. FT increases. Okay. So that is consistent with that equation since those are inversely related okay part e the string is cut and the beam begins to rotate about the hinge with neg negligible friction on the following axes sketch the angular speed of the beam as a function of time for the time interval while the beam falls the before the beam becomes vertical okay. so here is a, a drawing here uh, for this situation so now we cut the string and it starts to rotate right it's going this way Okay. What you're going to notice is that the angle, the angle here starts to decrease. All right. And then using, uh, using uh, Newton's second law rotational form, let's go and write this. We have torque, the net torque is equual to um, angle, the moment of inertia times, times the angular acceleration. And we can rewrite this as R. F sine theta is equal to, and there's only one force, one force causing it to to torque here, which is the um, the weight of the beam, is equal to I alpha. Now notice that a lot of a lot of these things are going to be a constant, so the R is not going to change. R is just from the, this distance to to that dis, to that location right there, where the force is uh, being exerted. So that's not changing, right? Um, the Moment the ang the moment of inertia that's not changing that's the, staying the same right uh, also the weight of the object that the force is not changing so the only thing that's changing is theta and angular acceleration so let's go ahead and write this I'm just gonna take this here and I'm just gonna write this on the side so we can see that the sine theta okay is gonna be proportional to the angular acceleration. So what happens, what happens as this theta decreases? As theta decreases, sine theta will also decrease. If sine theta decreases, what happens to the angular acceleration? It's also going to decrease. So this is an angular speed versus time graph. Angular speed, the symbol looks like that. Angular speed or angular velocity. And so when you cut it, it's going to start to speed up, okay? It's going to start. But as soon as the angle is decreasing... Okay, the slope on here, the slope on a, a angular velocity versus time graph, right? The slope on here represents, right, this, the slope represents the angular acceleration. Okay. So the angular acceleration is decreasing. That means the slope is getting flatter and flatter. So it's going to look something like this. It's going to go and it's going to get less and less. Uh, it's going to get flatter and flatter and flatter and flatter. Okay. And so the reason I know that is because the angle is decreasing, therefore sine theta is decreasing. Sine theta is proportional to the angular acceleration, 
and the angular acceleration is represented by the slope of this graph. As the angular acceleration decreases, the slope is going to get less and less.